Always great being joined by the number three ranked heavyweight, Curtis Blades, who's uh, doing this interview during Thanksgiving week. What a guy. Curtis, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing awesome. Uh, you were just telling me off air you're about to head back home to Chicago uh, shortly to, to see the family. Uh, how excited are you, first off, just to be able to have Thanksgiving this week? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, it's always uh, a blessing when you get to have the holidays without being in camp. It makes it a lot easier. You're able to actually appreciate things you're not like uh anxious or agitated type of moods oh yeah i'm happy happy yeah. i get to go home and enjoy it yeah and you don't have to feel guilty either if you have a fight book that's like hey there's nothing on, on the books right now but uh there is some news that has come out recently and it's actually interesting i gotta mention this to our audience that uh you and i just set up an interview even before this news came out we yeah. kind of wanted to get an update but we've heard from nolan king at uh, mma uh, junkie he did a great article uh talking about the fact that ufc is planning a fight between john jones and francis nagano in march as part of ufc 285 and the name we're hearing if if for whatever reason francis isn't ready to go is you um What's the latest? What are you hearing? That's, that's as about as far as I know as well. But seeing as how it's been like reported on all these like uh, um, official MMA websites and, and authors and stuff, I think it's legit. And I am going to begin preparing when I get home uh, after the holidays. I'll be in camp mode or the mindset. So I'll be ready. We'll see what happens though. When was the last time you spoke to the UFC or your management about a, about a potential next fight? Um, the l last my manager heard on a fight deal was they offered it back in September. A w wanted me to fight that the Russian that beat Derek Lewis, Pavlovich. Yeah, it wanted me to fight him on the the Izzy card, but I was like, nah. So okay. Interesting. Just because you feel like obviously like where you're ranked yeah. and everything else and, and, and all that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Um, and, and has there been any other talks of opponents or has that been the only sort of fight thing that you've heard of so far? No, I, I wasn't even thinking of even asking for a title shot. Although I, I'm, I'm very happy that I've been picked as a potential backup. Originally my eyes were set on, um, gone. Mm -hmm. I know he broke his hand and, he said he would be out until like January. So I was hoping for February, m March, April against him. That's yeah. what I was hoping for. Um, and it seemed like the original plan, according to the article that Nolan had, was that initially, and we've heard this for a while, that it was going to be Stipe Miocic and yeah. John Jones, right? And now yeah. apparently there there has not been any progress made on Stipe's end. Um, just from your perspective, do you think he fights again? Because it's, it's been going on for a while now, uh, Stipe oh. not having a fight. I don't think they're going to pay him what he wants, and I he deserves it. And I I think he still has the skill. I think he's he's still in phenomenal shape. But I think at this stage of his, of his um, life, I know he just had well, not just, but he has a little girl, like a three year old. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, and he's got the job. He's like, I'm good. I made a, a lot of money. I'm a legend. I can do meet and greets. I can do seminars. I'm always going to be uh, Stipe. I don't have anything else left to prove. I mean, I guess if he wants revenge, but I guess he doesn't want it that bad. Like, he wants the money that he wants, and I don't think the UFC is going to give it to him. So, no, I don't think he'll be back. Now, if you had your choice, and obviously, I, I mean, my understanding would be if you were to fight John, it would be an interim uh, title fight situation if Francis is, still isn't ready to go. Um, but if you had the choice of getting a title shot or fighting John Jones, if you had to pick one or the other, what would you choose? I was curious about that. Title shot? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I want, that's the ultimate. You know, like, yeah, John is, is the ultimate consolation, but what you what you work out for every day is like the real belt on an intra belt, the real belt. Yeah. No, no, I completely understand that for sure. Um, now if you fight John, obviously one of the interesting things if that matchup was to take place is your wrestling. I think a lot of people would agree. You have some of the best wrestling, uh, in the, in the division. Um, how do you look at that fight from a style perspective? If you and John were to fight, I think it's a, a great style. I think he's, he's used to being the aggressor, being able to use his reach and, walk other guys down. I know he likes to play with the hands and the wrists. 
people allow him to do that because they're stagnant and they're going backwards. I want to flip it. I want him to be going backwards, and I won't be home at him in a sh- sh- straight line. It'll be up and down, side to side. Give him a lot to think about. That way, he's not able to just uh, hit me with the jabs and the heaps and all that. You got to constantly be moving. I think he's he's been able to, the one guy who 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 did that was um um Gustafson. Yeah. Gustafson. He did that. In that fight, he moved great. He he attempted takedowns, he mixed it up. You gotta do everything. And that's what I would do. I think I have the I have the, the measurements. I obviously I think I'm the better grappler. I know he's a great great on the feet. He has the reach advantage, but he had the reach advantage also against Dom Reyes, and I was part with. Um, I also have the reach advantage on, um, and he was able. Dom was able to land a lot of those rear upper cuts. So if he can get into range to do that, I can get into range to, to land elbows and and wrestle. And whether John fights you or Francis or someone else, uh, if he fights in March, it's going to be well over two years that he last fought. Uh, his last fight was against three. Reyes. Yeah, th- sorry, three years. My math isn't very good. It explains why I'm doing this for a living. Uh, but uh, no, in general, like it- it's been a long time since Jones has been in the cage. How much do you factor in layoff uh, with him You know, coming back after such a long period off? I don't know, because I don't think the normal rules of a part of special athletes. I think he's a special athlete. Like Obviously, we know what he used to do before fights, and to be able to get away with that and be able to go c- compete with the best in the world, he's special. Like That's not even an argument. So I'm not even going to be c- c- counting on ring rust, whether he fights me or whomever. I think he's going to be ready. Yeah. I think he's like that. Yeah. And one other thing on John, and then obviously we got a lot more to talk about. Um, what do you what do you think about the power at heavyweight? You know, it's one thing the the fact that he's fought some. Yeah, I was just gonna say because you know he's fought like guys like Glover that do have knockout power, but um, to fight like going from that to like a Naganu or you or Lewis or any of these other guys, like it's a much different. Like you said, it's a level up, right? I think out of the guys you just mentioned, including myself, I probably hit the the least hardest, but still hard enough to knock him out if I land. I don't have to wind up. I can just throw. And because I have the confidence in my grappling, I'll be able to be the aggressor, which means I'll be able to have the volume. It's it's hard to have the volume when you're going backwards. I want to be the volume guy. And I think with, with the power that I have in this division, I can knock him out. If, if my hand can or my elbow connect, I can knock him out. Okay, I like the honesty there. Um, so uh, just just so we kind of clarify this, um, so if, if Jones and Francis does happen, you'd be okay being the backup for that, or or would you want to have a fight book? Because it's going to be a while since you'd taken your next fight, right? No, I'd be all right with being, being backup for that because you never know with John. You never know. Yeah, I'll be there. Like, okay. Hopefully, like, I like, I'll be on weight, obviously. I'll be ready. Okay, so that's like you said, that's kind of what you're aiming for, UFC 285 in Vegas. Um, if that fight doesn't happen, are there any other opponents you see? I guess Gone would be the only one, right? Because you it, don't want to fight below you. It has to be him. It yeah. has to be him. I've I've heard people say, Tuivasa. Tuivasa has only beaten one good guy, and I was in the slugfest. And that's Derek Lewis, who when we're talking about skill set, he ain't the most skillful. I don't think he's earned me yet mm-hmm. i don't think he's earned it okay and, um and yeah aspinall he's he's so injured so gone yeah you have to be gone is there any interest in, if you if, if lewis was available if, if you would want to fight him to get that one back or, or are you kind of past no. that at this point yeah i don't fight for revenge i'm trying to move up i lost a battle back i won he beat me he started losing i'm not gonna give him because I, I did that a few years ago with um Nganu. Mm-hmm. I was on a four four fight or maybe five fight win streak. I had just beaten Alistair, who was ranked number two at the time, and um the the UFC gave Eric Lewis a title shot against DC, and I was like I thought I should have deserved that. So out of anger, the UFC offers me Nganu, who was offered. Who's off of 
two losses. He had lost to Derek, and then he had lost. No, no, he lost to Stipe. Then he lost to Derek. Yeah. And they offered me and Gano off of two losses. I'm off a of four fight win streak. How does that help me? It doesn't. That was me being revengeful. That's not that stupid. Yeah. No, no. Completely agree with you there. Any worries about uh, the UFC maybe trying to do something similar with, with you not taking the Pavlovich fight? Is there any worry about that? No. I mean, I hope not. I wasn't thinking about that, especially with the, the news of me being the backup. It, it sounds like they're seeing me as a higher value heavyweight. So I'm hoping that that remains the minds. That, and if I don't get to be in a title fight with John or Francis, I'd like to get that gun fight. I know he'll be healthy. Um, like end of January, I, I give him eight weeks. We can do it in April. Whatever. How do you look at a gun fight from from a style perspective? The same thing. Like he he moves a lot more. So that'll be that'll be the battle. Like me trying to shut down his movement with my movement and my um, my wrestling and being able to pin him in and just tire him out. I think after a few grappling exchanges, he'll be fatigued enough that he won't have the same movement. And I've I've noticed a lot of guys when they fight me, they change up how they, they usually will fight. Volkov did it, Jorginho did it, Alice, everyone becomes a different fighter when they go against me. I think John would also. Like, you you don't feel comfortable being aggressive against me because you n- know that I will take advantage and I will t- take you down and you don't want to be underneath me. So I think he would be a lot less aggressive and that would play into my advantage. What did you think of Gon's win over two of us? The two of us actually got in, got in on, yeah. on him uh, in, in the fight, but uh, Gon ended up uh, obviously finishing him. I think Tuivasa did a good job of weathering the the storm. Like you might have to give up around. He's not gonna he's not gonna put you away immediately. He's he doesn't hunt the the knockouts. So you may have to lose around just to like. Taking all the information, find the range. Tuivasa did that, and he almost was able to to, um, to capitalize. I plan on adding. I think when you add the wrestling factor, that's the X factor. Being able to put it on the mat and having him have to always think about that, it alters how you like how you strike. You're not as heavy. You're more you're more flicky looking to run. And I'm just going to use that. Has uh, has two of us surprised you at all? Because he surprised me. Uh, he had that losing streak, and then he, you know, he finished Lewis, and, and he's gone on quite the run. And like I said, he even cracked gone in that fight. Uh, do you, were, were you a bit surprised by the by the resurgence he's had? He hasn't surprised me. He's still the same fighter. It's just the outcomes of play. He's a 50-50 guy, like a Derek Lewis. Like either he's going to knock you out, or he's going to get knocked out. I don't think he's fixed any holes. I think he's probably still a bad um, grappler, but he's he's still got heavy hands, and that's what he depends on. And he moves, like, fairly well for a guy of, like, his dimensions. You wouldn't expect him to be as explosive as he is, but he is. But it slows down. He starts to hunker down, and he turns into a bigger version of Mark Hunt, where he just, like, he wants to, like, walk you down, but without the movement and the pumps and all that. It's just like a march and that happens eventually because it's conditioning. It is what it is. He's not built to be a five-round guy. He's built like Derek Lewis to go in there and knock you out. So I think he's he is, he is what he is, a knockout artist. He's yeah. a younger version of Mark Hunt. Um, I know we spoke right after the Aspinall fight and sort of figuring out what's next. And it's been a couple of months now. Uh, have you taken anything away from that performance that you can bring into your next fight at all? Uh, Cause again, you look good early. It was just unfortunate the way it ended. My hand speed. I believe my hand speed. I've watched that fight a bunch of times, like maybe a hundred times. And I believe my hand speed, 
our hands are just, everyone was like, oh, Aspinall's hands are so much faster than Blades. No, they're not. My hands were just, just as fast. So I, I believe in my hand speed and I believe I can, I can use my, my striking a lot more um, effectively. Do you think Francis will resolve his issues with the UFC? Uh, I know he's injured now, and I think his contract, there's some issues. And then the other wrinkle in this whole thing, I don't know if you heard this, but his manager has left his management group. So his manager is still managing him, but he's not actually part of a management group anymore. I don't know if that'll complicate things. What, what do you think of this whole Francis situation? I did not know the thing about the, the manager. I don't know how much of a factor that'll be because I'm not, not into all that. I'm, but I don't know. I don't like. It seems like Francis wants to be in the UFC, but he wants the UFC to give him certain concessions that I don't think, or maybe that's what they're arguing over right now. And maybe they'll give it, give it to him, or maybe they won't. He'll just acquiesce. I don't really know because I don't really know him as a person. So I don't know if he's like aggressive. Is he hard headed? I don't know. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, we'll have to see how that one sort of goes out. And just uh, last thing on you and, and this whole situation now uh, with, with your next fight, have you been told anything by the UFC or management or is this just like stuff that you've read that sort of confirms that you're going to be fighting? This is just things that I've read. I mean, I have spoken with my manager. He seems to be in the same boat as me like because of how widely publicized this is. Like, this is legit. Okay. It's been a lot going on in MMA. Uh, the last pay-per-view we had, we have a new middleweight champion, Alex Pereira, finishing Israel Adesanya. Uh, what was your reaction to that, and did you expect that to happen? I did not expect that to happen. I know it was a possibility because the man's huge. He's, he's a big. I don't know how he makes the weight, but um, yeah, I was I was shocked that it happened because I thought, like, as the fight was going on, I thought. Izzy had figured him out. He had figured out the range. Like he was good, and then he was good up until he wasn't. I guess. <laughs> yeah. No. No. For sure. And then uh, one of the guys that Prayer was training with leading up to the fight, good friend of of yours, uh, Dominic Reyes, unfortunately losing again. Uh, what do you yeah. think's next for Dom? And and have you spoken to him since the fight? I have. I just recently spoke. To him. We didn't talk about the fight. I'm not gonna bring it up. I know how tough it is out there knockout especially yeah. like i'm sure and i'm sure he didn't get an idiot fan calling him about the knockout like you did yeah. right <laughs> yeah thankfully he didn't get that but was was next for him i think a break obviously after that you need a little bit of a break let the body uh recover and i don't know man um just from a health and safety standpoint he has had a few scary KOs and they're happening now with a lot a lot less um effort so I don't know honestly I haven't asked him about that but I'm sure eventually down the line we'll get into that yeah, I just, and again, I, you, know, you know, I've known Don for a while, uh, yeah. you know, dating back to when you both had the same manager. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where uh, there's a bit of concern only because of the way he was knocked out by Span. It was a jab, yeah. right? If it was yeah. a different, you know, jab. power shot, that's where maybe you think, yeah. you know, uh, you wonder. But, I mean, obviously, we both wish him the best here. It's not yeah. uh, anything bad. It's just you, when you see a knockout like that, you're like, oh, man, that's, that's it's tough, right? Because we've seen some of the best, uh, you know, uh, like the Chuck Liddell, it, it happens. You know, eventually the, the chin just goes a bit, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, another a big performance that that happened recently: uh, Islam Mahashev defeating Charles Oliveira. What did you think of that performance uh, by by Islam? It was an awesome performance. He he was able to out grapple who I thought was the best in the division. He was able to out beat him at his own game, and I think he's just got like he's got man strength. Like, he's mm -hmm. able just to like squeeze people. Like it's not crazy technique he's not doing anything that i haven't seen before he's just really really strong i think yeah. so. um and uh, i know this doesn't really affect you at all but uh what do you make of the ufc not allowing fighters to bet on themselves anymore <laughs> i'm like you said it doesn't affect me i never did that because i think that's bad luck i would never do it 
Yeah. And I hate when my homies tell me, hey, I put four grand. I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm sure some people are going to be upset. And I I think, honestly, it should be up, up to you. Like, if you if you want to do that, but but you have to bet on yourself to, to win. win. Yeah. You can't ever bet on yourself to lose because then that's, that smells bad. But I think you should be allowed to always bet on yourself to win because what's the harm? Like, I'm, I believe I'm going to win. I should make some extra money. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, some other news. Uh, Cain Velasquez getting bail. What did you think of that? And do you think he'll get his full freedom? I'm happy for him. I don't think he belongs in there with, like, the real bad people. Um, I do believe he is going to have to serve some type of time because he did break the law. He can't be a vigilante, although I understand. I've, I understand. But we have – you don't want to set a precedent like – this is allowed. It's not, man. I wish he had just not used a uh, firearm and used his fist. I think it would have been a lot easier to like explain that. Like he just he lost it and he just started whooping his ass. Like that's what I would do. I wouldn't want to end it that fast. I'd want to eat the hell out of you. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I mentioned it there. You're heading back uh, back home for Thanksgiving. What are your Thanksgiving plans? You got anything lined up? <laughs> just gonna smoke and watch uh football games love it love it that's good man is there any like spot you go to right away when you go back home like for food because i know obviously the food's a lot different in chicago than colorado i'm actually we're flying in the saint saint um louis to meet up with my dad and my, my aunts and them because that's where his his mom is from and it's oh, been cool. like five years since i went down there so we're going but the Food there also is a lot better than the food here. I don't have like a spot, but I know I'm wanting what a, a burger. They got good burgers out there. Okay, I'll take your word for it. And uh, how's your daughter doing? Uh, obviously, and and how old is she? I always keep forgetting. She's four. Her birthday was back in June. That's right. Uh, okay, because I know. Yeah, my son's five, so I was trying to remember. I know they're they're close in age, which is good. How's she doing? How's she's in? She must be in preschool then, right? Yeah, yeah, she's in school. She she's. One all right, she, I don't know how I feel about this, but she has a, a speech in heaven also. Um, we have her in uh, speech therapy. It's helping out a lot. It's actually helped her a lot more than it, it ever helped me. But um, besides that, she's doing great. She had a great Halloween, Thanksgiving. I won't be seeing her. She'll be with her mom, but I will be seeing her for for Christmas. A little bit so after. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Do, do you feel like now uh, you mentioned it there with your daughter? Do you feel like uh, you know you might even be more you know sort of an advocate for you know speech issues because maybe it's not as widely known for a lot of parents out there yeah. now that you're having to deal with it. Is that something you feel like you'll use your platform for a bit more for that? Because yeah. again, we've talked about this so many times. I get so annoyed with people when people talk about y- your your impediment and they don't know that that you have one. They just automatically go, "Oh, it's because he lost to Francis," you know? Yeah. And I used to get angry about that, but oh, I get it. Some there's so many people in the world, and this is a this is a disability that only affects like 1%. I don't know about the whole world, but in America, it only affects 1% of the population. So a lot of people probably just don't have any experience with someone with a speech impediment. And it doesn't help help them for me to get angry at them. Yeah. I should just do what I've, I've been doing as of recently, just explain. Like I... I have a speech impediment, and this is what it is. It just it doesn't have anything to do with getting hit. I do hate that though when they automatically assume I I have a head injury. I've only been knocked out once. Yeah, one time. Once, yeah, it was Lewis. That was it. It's the only yeah. fight. The Naganu yeah. fights you. You weren't knocked out cold. Yeah, so exactly. I'll always have to clarify that. Okay, last question before we get out of here. What are you gaming right now? Are you getting any game time in? I'm sure you don't have a fight, so are you getting a little bit of video game time. Yeah, um, I'm actually playing right now. There we go. A little bit of Madden. Good stuff. Who uh, are you playing with the Bears, obviously, right? No, I'm playing with the Browns, actually. <laughs> <laughs> How come? <laughs> um, because they're really bad, and I just wanted to challenge myself to win with a bad team. 
I like that. That's work, good. Work. Ma making yourself stronger, right? There you go. That's good. Curtis, thanks for doing this, man. I know you got a flight to catch in a number of hours, but uh, it's still good to talk to you here. Uh, if there's anyone you'd like to thank before you got it here, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Um, as always, I want to thank my team at Elevation, my coaches, Vinny and uh, Cody, my management of Hainer Sports, and still don't have any sponsors right now to, to plug, so I'll just leave it at that. There you go. If any uh, marijuana sponsors want to hit you up, they should uh, do that ASAP. Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure.